Yep. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Yep. Another day, hey, man. man. Yeah, man. I'm out here sir? traveling. We traveling. You are over there in the in a in a in a old uh, suite or something. It looks like. Yeah, had, had, yeah. To, had to rent a suite to get on the on the podcast for the day out here okay. in Nashville. Okay. So, I, I still got well, my. Had... I got me a new pair of glasses. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little different. All a little right. different. We're trying to do it. Okay. 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 Well, well, man, you know what, man? man? We do got a great show tonight, man. Got a great um, show. I've been waiting all week for this one. <laughs> I've been waiting all week. I know, right? We we yeah, about to see so what it do. You want to go ahead and give us a, a, a slamming yeah, intro? Yeah, I mean, Jessica Woods. What can I say? Um, very genuine person. Um, one of the top producers here in Jacksonville. I think she did over nine million dollars last year. Um, yeah, she she's a, she's a heavy hitter, man. Been in the business, I think close to almost over two decades. Um, and I, and I can't wait for you all to hear her unique story of in the business. Yeah. Um, and how things have went for um, superpowers. Uh, basically, she's she can do it all, man. She's adaptable. She can um, make things happen. Yeah. And her other superpower is she's a she's the mother to Jace, a uh, nine year old. And I tell you what, man, Jace do not play by his mama. You don't play by the radio. No, look here. Look, look, look here. He like me by my mama. He don't play. I said I well, we, we'll talk about it in a few minutes, but we'll yeah, Jay's not play by his mama. Yeah, he did not play. All right, well, let's go ahead and bring Miss Jessica Woods right now. Jessica Woods, y'all. Jessica Woods. Hey, we need to have a little clap or something, man. We need to have a clip. Clap. Hey, man. Okay. We need to have a little clap. I know, man. I, we need to stop a sound machine or something. A sound machine. Jessica. Miss Woods. Hi. Hello, hey. guys. Yeah, you ready? I'm so ready? excited. I'm like really excited. Good. Good. We're nervous, Good. but we're gonna make it easy for you. We ain't gonna be we, we'll we make it nervous. easy for you. We're gonna make okay. it easy for you. All right. All right. We just family, just us having a conversation. Yeah, hey, just having a conversation. Real talk. Just real talk and real estate. We around the coffee yep. table at your home, just talking shop. Okay. That's it. All right. All right. That's it. So all listen, right. I, I know we 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 know each other. We we all three are friends and we talk. Uh we just had an event about last week and we had an opportunity mm -hmm. to kind of chop it up and talk a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we know who you are. So just kind of give us an aerial view uh, real quick of who is Jessica Woods? Okay. Um, Jessica is very quiet. <laughs> we can't be I'm quiet on the show tonight. Stepping outside of my good. comfort zone. <laughs> stepping outside of my comfort zone. Okay. Um, I am, let's see, I've been in the business 22 years. It'd be 23 years um in july i am i love sports i like doing different things around jacksonville um uh, of course i enjoy real estate and pretty laid back easy going are you from are you from jacksonville i'm not okay no. where you from where you from i'm originally from houston texas houston texas and so how, did, how did you actually end up in Jacksonville, Florida? So hmm. my dad's job transferred here and he, they, well, he moved here, I'm going to say like 91. And I ended up, started researching, you know, colleges and things of that sort. And I said, I think I want to go to school in Florida. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I ended up moving here my junior year of high school and ended up going to the University of Florida. Nice. And nice. graduated, came back here, and I lived here until 2007. And then mm -hmm. I lived in Atlanta, Georgia for like seven years. And then I came back here in 2014. 2014. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So so let's so let's start off. When did real estate start for you? What was your why? How did you end up in real estate? And you have a very unique story. Can you kind of go into that a little bit as well? <laughs> yeah. Um, one day I was visiting my dad and a very, I guess, successful realtor at that time was like, hey, I've never met your daughter before. You know, what does she do? And my dad's like, oh, she's going to school. She's going to be a lawyer. <laughs> and so um, she was like, have you ever thought about selling real estate? And we're both like, yeah, no, never thought about it. 
And she just said, I think you should look into it and see. And she just said that. And my dad put me in a real estate class. <laughs> wow. Now, is that lady still in the business? Um, I don't think so. I okay. think I, I, I think she's she's out. She's out of the business. Wow. Okay. 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 So you got in the business in 2000 and... I, so I originally got in the business. So I got my license in July 2000. And my first, I guess, introduction to real estate was like 2001. Okay. And mm. um, at that time, I um, I was working for the first T. I don't know if you guys know what the first T is. We introduced the, the golf team for kids, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was working at the first T of St. John's County. And um, there was like a semi-custom builder that was out there. And so Monday through Friday, I'm out there helping the kids doing programming and all of that. And I see these beautiful homes that are coming up. So I just go into the model and say, hey, you know, I have my real estate license. Can I, you know, can I just come and learn and watch, you know, while I'm working here and they were gracious enough to say, yeah, you can come on in. And so on the weekends, I sat at the models oh, wow. hmm. and kind of watched the site agent work with clients and kind of get the behind the scenes of how things work with that semi-custom builder. So that's how I got in, like introduced. Then um, I moved from the first tee to the police athletic league hmm. and worked over there. And um I had interviewed with a lot of companies, but I ended up hanging my license with um, Watson Realty in Fort Caroline mm. because I worked off a of monument. I don't know if you guys okay. are familiar mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. You got 33rd and mm -hmm. um, monument. So I was mm -hmm. working out of the monument office and that's how I got my leads. <laughs> um, so I had my license at the Fort Caroline office and I did that for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually was in the office and one of the ladies that was in there was like, have you thought about working for a builder? And mm -hmm. I was like, no, you know, I got a job. I'm doing this. And she was like, you might want to look into looking, you know, working for a builder. And I interviewed with DS Ware Homes. Got the job, quit my PAL job, and I started working for DS Warehouse in 2003. And mm. I sold Rolling River Estates, Waterbrook Falls, White Oak Trail. Mm. Um, we had some off of Lim Turner. Yeah. So that was my area. And I okay. did that until I moved to Atlanta in 2007. So you did it for about six years, then, six or seven years then that you were doing site sales. Yeah. Well, here. Okay. So then I moved to Atlanta and I also worked for a builder there. Okay. Okay. So what was the total duration of your builder experience? Uh, let's see. So probably about 10 years total. About 10 years? Okay. Okay. And now you're on the general side. So what do you think the biggest difference is between working for the builder and doing general? Um, general is flexibility. <laughs> okay. okay. When you work for the builder, um, you're pretty much on a set schedule. Um, they want you, you know, in the models there from, you know, you get there, you put the balloons out, you make the, back then we used to make the cookies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and, um, they want you there. And if mm -hmm. someone drives up at 605, you still you, there, you're still there. You're until seven, eight o'clock. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. pretty much the biggest difference is that they they don't want to hear you're sick, you're not feeling well, um, unless you've got a partner, which mm -hmm. I've seen that change over the years. It's like now they have a partner system. So a lot of agents, site agents, they work together, which is nice. Yeah. It'll, it yeah. affords the other person to take some time off. Got it. Got it. Gotcha. So so from what from what I hear you saying, you had a very successful 10 year period as a site agent for builders. What was the turning point for you to come back to general real estate? So first thing that happened was that I got fired mm. <laughs> um, in Atlanta. Okay. In Atlanta. In Atlanta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I was I was gravely ill. Mm -hmm. Like in the ER, they're not letting me go. They're not. And my manager called and was like, look, she needs to do whatever y'all need to release her. We need her for this event. Like, wow. wow. She's it. And they're like, I'm sorry. You know, her blood count is low. We just gave her these blood transfusions. She's not leaving. So needless it was to that say, so so hold on me to cut you off. But so you telling me it was that serious that the builder called the hospital to say, hey, we need you out back in the office. Wow. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry. And it's and that's when I found out it's a at will, like or that I think that's the term mm -hmm. that they call mm -hmm. is at will. So like mm -hmm. they can just call you up and say, Hey, don't come back in. You're good. We're done. Like mm. Mm. so wow. yeah, that was but the, yeah, I will say this, that did happen, but they still carried my medical and they gave that's me right, a stipend. Right. That's good. Um, that's good. Okay. Right. For like so, when, so when that happened, so when that happened, what made you, was it at that point, was the turning point that you said, I'm going general, I'm no longer going to be stuck to a builder? Is that? Yeah. At that yeah. point, um, first off, I got my health back in order. Okay. So okay. that was the main thing was that I wanted to figure out what was going on with me, what, you know, what was happening. And we figured that out, got it done. And then I went into general real estate. Got it. Gotcha. Got so it. let me ask you a question. So so at this time, I'm sure you had to be devastated because they just fired you. What, what was your mind state like and how did you overcome it to say, OK, forget these folks. I'm about to knock this thing out of the park. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, yeah, I'm at that time, <laughs> I mean, this, this is like 2010, right? So okay. like at that time, I mean, I, I've got rental properties all over, like Florida, <laughs> Texas. I'm like, you know, you um, personally, you personally had all that. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk about that too. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that. So okay. Had all of that, you know, and I thought, okay, I'm good. I've got some savings. I'm, I'm going to be okay. Um, and after four months, I started to panic. The mm -hmm. first four months, I was I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I've got my properties. I got this. I got that. And when it's one person that's kind of like dealing with all of this stuff and it hits you in that amount of time and you're going to – at that time, I was getting um, – iron treatments twice a week um, through um, the um, IV, mm -hmm. like IV iron, because I couldn't take the pills. So I had to sit in a, like a, like with chemo patients to mm -hmm. get my treatments twice a week. Okay. And um, so then you're like drained on those days. You're like resting up in between that. And um start just dealing with normal everyday, not going to the grocery store. You got to get somebody to take you to the grocery store. You got to do this. It, it just started to add up. And so like maybe month five, I was like, this isn't going to work out. So mm -hmm. I tried to file bankruptcy and they said, nope, you can't do it. Can't because you got all this. You can't do it. Gotcha. So I really started to panic because, um, I thought I had it planned out, but wow. I just saw kind of what the writing on the wall would be if I could not go back to work and start producing again. Mm -hmm. So finally, I want to say about month seven, I had got me a good attorney and was able to go ahead and pretty much give everything back and start fresh. Wow. wow. So, yeah, because you, you have to accept the loss. Yeah. Like yeah. at that time, That's my good. health was more important. I had to clear my mind. Otherwise, it would have drove me crazy. So um, it, you know, it hurts because you work so hard to accomplish all these things. And mm -hmm. then in less than a year, you have to let it all go. Mm -hmm. But I'm still here today. So yeah, exactly. you can get exactly. it all again. One of the wow. things that you just said was you have to be able to accept the loss. And I think that's so powerful because we get so attached to things, right? And it's very, very difficult sometimes to let things go and realize that it's okay and you can rebound. Kind of walk us through your mindset at that particular time from a from a single woman 
trying to get back into the industry and being able to let go of certain things. Walk us through your mindset transformation. Well, again, you you know, when you're trying, so for like, I mean, I, I fought the good fight for about six months. I mean, I, you know, and then in between that, I had two tenants that moved out unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I had family watching properties in Texas and they were like, went to the property and nobody's there. And like, it just, um, it was devastating to say the least. So again, I guess that's just kind of like the, I guess, um, not, and anal- I want to say I analyze everything. Okay. So after that, I just started saying, you know, what's more important for me to, you know, focus on these material things and trying to save them or get my, get myself and my health back in order and come up with a game plan later on. That's good. That's good. Gotcha. Wow. So how long did it take you to, once you, once you finally let everything go, how long did it take you to get right back onto, to the saddle, onto the horse and start grinding again? Oh my gosh, it took me, let's see, because that was like 10, 11, so I want to say like 15 or 16, because, okay, so 10, 11, then um, 12, I was still trying to figure out like, okay, um, I worked in Georgia for a little bit, I went, um, the person that I was working with in Atlanta, he moved to Georgia. He was one of the managers in Georgia. So I went to Georgia and sold homes up there for a little bit. So I'm sorry. So hold on. So you went back to site sales at this point. Right. You went back to site so, sales. I went, so I went to Augusta. I left Atlanta and I went to Augusta. Okay. Site sales. Doing site, site sales. Correct. Okay. Got it. So okay. um, then things didn't really kind of flow in Augusta. So I went back to Atlanta and um, then I did the, um, at that time, the Rios. Okay. The, okay. The big thing. Mm-hmm. So um, I did those for a little while, but then you're doing the BPOs, you're doing the, you know, it, it was a hustle. And that, that 2009, just, 2010 area? That was like 12, 2012? Okay. okay. I was doing those. So um, I think I think nine and 10 was when they were really big, but they were still in Atlanta. They were still pretty um, relevant in 12, 13. So I was doing those. And again, just with the short sale process. And I I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. You may get paid and you may not get paid. Like So then Mm -hmm. it was again, I was just kind of back to the drawing board because that wasn't really working either. I would do the BPOs. You get paid, you know, to do that. And then you get paid on the closing of the sale. But the, again, you're only getting paid like 1% on the gotcha. deal, to be honest. You're, you know, so it's not, you're working really hard for little income. Right. So gotcha. I took on a part-time job as a leasing okay. agent. There you go. Gotcha. Property management. Gotcha. So did that because, again, just with all the ripping and running and doing everything, I had to still, you know, have the benefits, have the, you know, um, some money coming in. Mm -hmm. Plus you get, you know, thinking, okay, you get other incentives as far as like half off your rent or what, you know, whatever comes with that. That's what I did. So in that in that time frame, I'm still dealing with my health scare. So I'm still, okay. you know, getting those treatments. I had a surgery. I had it was just a lot going on. So gotcha. I couldn't really still hustle like I hustled before. Right. Okay. So so let me ask you something. So so you you're going through a, a whole lot of things um in a short amount of time. Sure. And then you we talked about you being you you're very educated. Why not just say forget this real estate? Let me just go get me a, a full time job. And start making this money and, and 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 just get just forget this whole thing and go, go back to get 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 a, get a, get a new career get my nine to five. yeah so and i mean that's a great question so i could i i could have 
-hmm. But in the same token, um, my kind of background is in nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So the hours that you put in, you pretty much make around the same amount of money, but you're going to put in longer hours. You're going to work weekends. Um, And I just really felt like I was really successful in real estate and that I would get back there again. Sure. Like it might okay. not happen, you know, today, it might not happen tomorrow, but I always had income coming in from real estate. So, um, yeah, you could work the nine to five, but, and again, the type of field that I'm in nonprofit, uh, you know, event planning, mm-hmm. the, the income is kind of at a ceiling. Like you can right. only make so much. And then much, I yeah. have been removed for like, what, 10 years at that time, 10, 12 years, I would probably have to take an entry level position because I had been removed for so long. Sure. So okay. I was just like, yeah, no, I, I enjoy real estate. I enjoy what I do. And like I said, I had a proven track record of being successful. So I knew if it didn't happen, eventually it would. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. So, so, so what is your, so you, you went through a whole lot um, in a, in a this amount of time. So what advice would you give to those agents that may have been going through the same thing as you've gone through to where, you know, they have to just figure this thing out and burn the boat to get into real estate. They have to just say, okay, it's not gonna happen right now, but I eventually know it's going to happen for me. So where, where do you figure that out at that time? So what I would say is, I mean, during that time, I always I had the, you know, the builder background. So I always Mm -hmm. went to models. I always went to even though I might not have been working for a builder, I stayed knowledgeable about what was going on in the area. What, you know, um, how the, the the interest rate, like those things are important to stay abreast about what's going on in the Mm -hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. Um, don't get discouraged, you know, um, read that, that read. Now we're in the time, like you guys are doing this podcast. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're in the time where you can go to YouTube, you can Google, you can do whatever to learn mm-hmm. about real estate and techniques. I mean, social media is a huge part of it right now. I would take that time to develop and grow your social media following. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this is a different time and we're only talking yeah. about you know nine ten years ago okay and there's so many things that a newer agent can do to um get inspiration to mm-hmm. keep moving forward eventually you'll find out what works for you got you so so really quick before you ask the question chris so what was your inspiration back then now that we're in a new time because I, I wasn't in real estate that when you were first started so what was your inspiration how did you gather inspiration to just say, okay, hey, I'm going to keep keep going with this thing back then. So back then was because, I mean, so I had visited, um, I was living in Atlanta and I had visited back home, well, back to Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. My, my family lives here now. So okay. um, I was in the Avenues Mall and I ran into this couple that was like, oh my God, oh my God, I just want to hug you and this, that, and the other. I'm just like, okay. Because remember, I've been gone now, like, I don't know, five or six years. So I'm like, okay. okay. And um, they're like, we are so thankful for you because you sat us down. You told us, you know, um, not to do this, not to do this. And we listen because we were approved for this much. You said if anything should happen, what, you know, but they were like, when all of our neighbors were losing their homes, we were still there. Wow. Mm. And I was just like, okay. So that, that was one person that listened. Um, And they said, because you took the time, you cared about our family and our needs. And, you know, again, just showing that I cared. Right. And that's the thing. I care. I'm, I'm naturally, genuinely a compassionate person. So like, you know, my clients or customers, I treat them like family. Right. Like, I don't, you know, I don't want to just say I want to sell you a house just to sell you a house. That's not my that's not my strategy. I actually right. like to sit down, get to know you, get to know your family. 
see, figure out what your long term goal is. You know, are you okay. a first time home buyer? Are you going to be staying in the house? Like, I like to build relationships with my clients. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Gotcha. So two thousand. So by this time, two thousand fourteen. Is that right? That's when you ended back here in Jacksonville, two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Two thousand fourteen. So two thousand fourteen, you come back to Jacksonville and you're ready to embark upon the real estate game. At that point, no. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, um, not really, because I'm a okay. new mom. I'm a new mom. Uh -huh. I came back home. Things didn't work out, so I came back home. Thankfully, I had somewhere to go. Sure. Um and um. Again, kind of word got back. Hey, you know, Jessica's back in town. I actually had a couple builders reach out to say, hey, you want to come back? And I'm like, no, I have a newborn. So, um, so uh, again, a family friend said, hey, you know, I know you've been in real estate for a while. Just do you think you want to come back and kind of, you know, get your feet wet again and see how it works out? And I did. So mm -hmm. I believe I signed up in October of 2014 because I had my son. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say he was about, it might've been September Okay. 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 of 2014. I signed back up. Signed back up. So you went to a, bro what broker did you go to at that particular point? Keller Williams. You went to Keller Williams. So you Keller at Keller Williams. Williams. They got amazing training. Shout out to Keller Williams. Y'all not paying us yet, but y'all we're gonna get some of your money. That's my sponsorship. <laughs> That's sponsorship. But look, so you go to Keller Williams, they got amazing training. When did Jessica say, I'm about to do this? And what was that turning point in your life that made you do it? So I would say that would have been. 2017. So I signed up in 2014 mm. and I was at Keller Williams for about a year. And then I went to ERA. So we, we, we kind of follow this. So then I went to ERA. Then I left ERA in 17 and went to Kawa Banker. And then was it 19 or 20? 20. I'm at Better Homes and Gardens. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So I would say in 17 is when I said, okay, I'm ready. Um, because at that time, my son was um, kindergarten. Okay. So okay. now he's at school. Okay. Um, because this, I mean, it, you know, being a full-time parent is a lot with being a realtor. Sure. <laughs> it's sure. a lot to handle. Um, but once um, he was in school and I got my systems in place, then things just started to kind of come together. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Let's talk about these systems. I know you got a question, Maurice, but I want to talk. I want to go okay. into. Those, those those systems. When you say you put these systems in place, what systems are you currently that that you use to help you navigate around your business and help you explode? What did you put in place? What was the first, second, third thing that you put in place? Um. So the first thing is is training. Mm. <laughs> um. Um. At Keller Will. Uh, sorry. At Caldwell Banker, um. They had us do ninja training. So in ninja training, they um, kind of teach you about how to um, follow up with your clients and your customers. So, again, I really didn't. I, I sold homes. Again, I was available to my clients, but I really didn't hone in and follow up and, you know, make sure mm -hmm. intentionality. I, I, I really didn't do that. They knew I was dependable. They could contact me if they had any questions or anything. Mm -hmm. But to really go out and, you know, hey, call on birthdays or holidays or anniversaries or those things. It really means a lot to, you know, surprise them with flowers or, you know, even Mother's Day just passed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, calling those mothers, especially those new mothers, because mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've been there. So it, it, it's, it's kind of hard that first one of getting used to being a mom and 
you know, everything else that's going on in life. And then you get this surprise bouquet of flowers. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, thank you. You know, mm -hmm. um, being intentional, I think it, it goes back to establishing those relationships. That's good. Gotcha. That's good. Gotcha. So now, so you talked about something that I want to kind of touch on for a second. Um, you put systems in place. Now, how, how do you, or what advice would you give to someone to, handle work-life balance. We all know you're a single mom. So how do you handle that work-life balance to take care of Jace and still have, take care of a over $9 million business every year That's or good. more? So um, you've got to have a good team. You, you, mm -hmm. you have to have a good team. And this is something that I'm still learning. Um, in those high production years, I had a babysitter that helped me out. Um, okay. She picked him up. She took him to school, tutoring, things of that sort. Um, she was able to assist. Um, I am still old school, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I'm getting, I'm getting, um, I'm getting better. So like okay. I'm doing this podcast, I'm getting outside my box, but definitely you need a transaction coordinator. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need someone to assist with those, you know. Um, Cause just the tedious work of making sure that the lender gets certain docs, making sure that your clients get, you know, you're dealing with eight to 10 contracts in a month. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a, it can get overwhelming. It can get very overwhelming because things gonna, are going to slip through the cracks. Right. So you definitely want to get a good transaction coordinator to assist you with those items. Mm -hmm. um, even if you can get an admin, I would, you know, definitely get an admin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to so, be able so, to help you put in those contacts, mm -hmm. put in, you know, make sure that your newsletter is updated and getting sent out and all of that. So those are the two major things. Like I said, if you get a babysitter or a nanny, <laughs> mm -hmm. that, but you need a good team around you. Got you. So at, so at what point did you know you needed this team? to start developing these people? Like what, at what point in your career, or what production or how did you know when it was time to get these people in place? So I had pretty much been a consistent, like I always hovered around four to 5 million. I just kept hovering, kept hovering. Okay. And so finally um, doing the referral again, the training. So mm -hmm. did the um, ninja training and then did the buffini. Um, okay. Wendy was talking about the Buffini. Wendy talked about that last week. Correct. Yeah. Wendy does the Buffini in our office. So um, implementing those systems that are taught in the Buffini courses, again, shows you how to first start up your CRM. Then, you know, taking your CRM and labeling your clients, asking for the referral. A lot of agents, we don't we don't ask for the referral. You know, mm -hmm. you feel like, oh, I provide good service. You know, you can automatically you know, just do it. Just do it. Right. Because otherwise right. they're they don't know. They don't mm -hmm. unless you ask for it. So right. they think, mm -hmm. hey, she gets referrals. Like she doesn't need my referral. It's like, no, you have to ask for it. Um, and then also staying in front, pop buys. That, you know, that is something that's really big. And I mean, again, you don't have to. I say I do like five to 10 a month, but it's a great thing to just kind of, you know, stay in front of your clients to show, hey, I'm still in the business. I'm still because I get those text messages. Are you still like I have people from Atlanta that say, are you still in the business? Mm -hmm. I have somebody looking in Florida. I've gotten a couple referrals out of Jackson. Not like I have one in Palm Beach and I had one in Panama City mm -hmm. <laughs> from Atlanta. New construction. Gotcha. Right. Just because they were like, are you still in real estate? So those are ways to go ahead and try to, you know, have the systems work for you. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, do you, <laughs> what do you think it is, Jessica, that that allows you? What is? What do you think it is that you're doing that's keeping you now you're in the nine million range, but you said you was hovering around that four and five when you have ages out here who can't even break a million or two million. So what do you think uh, that's about you and what you're doing that they're not doing? Um, Again, I, I, I honestly think that it's um, going out and um, 
the age that we live in now, you have to go out and look for the business. I mean, um, I'm not really big on social media. Um, we have some agents out there that that's all they do is get their leads from social media. Yeah. But I do go out on a consistent basis and film um, model homes and I get calls off of that. Mm -hmm. Just doing a random video here and there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think. I mean, past clients, that's that's another thing. I mean, just a couple listings that I got this year are from my past clients. So again, um, just trying to stay in front of them and getting the referral business. Mm -hmm. it, it, those are kind of easy ways to get business. But I just say, stay educated, stay on top about uh, on top of what's going on in the market, real estate related. Um, mm -hmm. Join the chamber. Uh, Jacksonville Business Journal, read those articles. Reading is the lifeline in our business. Know what new projects are coming in. Look mm -hmm. at the downtown development and everything that's going on down there. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's coming to Jacksonville. I mean, with the Jaguars and everything that's going on, we have a lot of stuff that's coming into the city. So again, it's going to bring in people where they need a place to live. Right. Yep. So why can't you be the person to find them a place to, to live? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Good. So let me ask you this then. So Jessica, so you've mentioned a few things. So what are your top three ways of prospecting? How are you prospecting right now? So right now I'm doing mail outs um, okay. to um, different areas that I've worked in. Um, when okay. you have a closing in a certain area, just soul cards okay. um, are an easy one. Just mm -hmm. list it. When you get a new listing, send those out. And they're really inexpensive. They're not really, it's it's an easy way to get leads. Mm -hmm. People are going to call. Um, the second one would be, I don't do open houses. I know you. <laughs> I don't. So, I don't. So, so, so why not? Tell us so why, why not? you don't do open houses. Yeah. Um. So I did one open house for a friend, for for a builder friend. I did an open house for her, but just like a general rent. I had a really bad experience, so okay. I just I don't do open houses. I got you. Because um, yeah, I I had a gentleman that was not looking for a house, mm. showed up to the house, and I left. Mm, got you. That would, do it. that would do. Yeah. It. That would do. That would do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Unless you have okay. someone to accompany you, you know, that don't do it by ladies. Don't do it by yourself. Have someone accompany you. Do it in pairs. Every do it in pairs. Yeah. Go ahead. What else? So what are the other two ways of, of prospecting for you? Um, I'm doing a little bit on social media. A little. Oh, uh, sucking now. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not really that great at it, but um, definitely, I mean, if you look at a lot of the um, heavy hitters in our market, they do a lot of social media. Social media. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if they can do it, then I need to get on it. Um, right. And then I'm trying to think. The third one is just referrals, relationships, okay. you know, having those coffee dates, going out to lunch. Um, I am, you know, we do a couple of events in our office and I always mm -hmm. invite our clients to that. But I'm looking at adding client parties this year. Um, I've seen a lot of agents have a lot of success with that. So that's something yeah. that I've been um, planning just haven't had the um, chance to um, get that set up yet, but that's something I'm definitely looking at. I know you talked about old school stuff and you say you kind of old school, kind of go to the original stuff. Do you do, what about expired listings? Do you do expired listings? Do you do door knocking? None of that type of stuff. You're not no, doing any of that. Got no. it. Never, never did it. Never did it. Never did it. So what's your viewpoint on all this new stuff? Like, What's your viewpoint on all the new stuff that's coming in and how do you stay focused to not get so caught up in the weeds and just stay true to what you do? Because it's working. Um, I mean, I, I I do use chat GPT. I, I, I have gotten on there. 
Um, that helps out a lot and it saves time in the end. Um, but as far as like, I don't have a TikTok. <laughs> I don't. Instagram. I know you got an Instagram though. Instagram. I have an Instagram and I have Facebook, but I don't have a TikTok. I have a Twitter. Um, but chat GPT again, it helps you write your um, descriptions. It helps you give you content on what you could talk about on social media. Um, there's even I'm not that advanced yet, but it's a way to uh, contact your customers to, you know, make it sound like you're calling. You can set up calls oh, to your snap. clients. Yeah. Wow. Not there yet. Wow. But um, you want to implement things that are going to make it easier on you because this industry is very time oriented. You, mm -hmm. you have to be able to manage your time, um, not only with the scheduling of the showings, but also, you know, contracts, um, marketing, that you need to be able to block your time. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do anything if you just focus on, oh, I got to get clients and, oh, I got to show homes. You're not yeah. going to be able to be successful in anything else. Got gotcha. you. So, so that's a, I want to ask this question from Tara. She put in the comment section. Um, how much do you rely on marketing to still grow and develop your business? Um, right now, good question. Right now, marketing is about thirty percent of my business. I've been okay. able to thankfully um, take a break um, this year. Um, for the last, uh, I would say about four or five months, I've been able to um, focus more on my son and kind of take a step back. And I mean, I'm still selling, but I'm not getting at it as I was before because gotcha. I wanted to spend more time with him. But that has allowed me the time to focus more on my marketing. So that's what I said. Um, I'm doing the mail outs right now okay. and seeing you know, what comes of that. So nice. I would say about 30% right now is geared towards marketing. All right. All right. So by you taking that, not to try to go personal, but by, try, by you taking that break to try to spend more time with your son, did you develop the business enough to where you don't miss a beat or did your business go back a little bit based upon that, that break? <clears throat> yeah, my, my business did go back a little bit. Okay. And um, the great thing is, is though now I do have some momentum going into the summer months, you know, yeah. our, I, I, I think I, I gauged it at a good time. Sure. So, I mean, I was still selling. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm okay right now, yeah. but yeah. it's not like where I was. I mean, um, I had some really good months. And I feel like in the summer, I'm going to have some really good months because I've got a couple of things that are working. So I feel like I'll get back on track. But I just needed that time to kind of refocus. Got it. I have a question for you. I know, Mark, Maurice, you got a question too. I know. No, go, no, go ahead. Let me ask you a question. If knowing the Jessica was knowing what she knows now, if she knew that back in 2014 to 2017, what would you have told your then self to do to prepare you for where you are right now? Ooh. Mm, good question. That's a good question. Yeah. I would say, um, go ahead and take, take, take that leap of faith. There you go. Mm, that's it. Go ahead and do it. Um, mm. I think I was so focused on, you know, Oh my goodness! I've got this. You know, it, it motherhood is a is, is a weird thing. You know, um, you you got this little human that you're <laughs> taking care of and have to constantly be there for and make sure that they eat and that they don't, you know, get hurt or you know, um, have some sort of accident or something. And then you cup you you couple that with sales, you know, having a, mm -hmm. a career in sales, that takes a lot because again, you're sleep deprived. You're on a schedule where you're like, you know, um, my son would probably sleep during the day and be up all night. <laughs> right. Right. So um, 
I think I would just say, you know, take the leap of faith and you got this. Like um, you did it before. Like I said, I did it before. I can do it again. So I was just more focused on making sure that um, he was um, being taken care of. Yeah. But I could have focused a little bit more on my career. I think a lot of us, we miss it you know, based upon the fact that we don't take enough risk. We don't take enough leaps mm-hmm. of faith. And then when we come back to this point, we say, man, I wish I would have just taken that little leap of faith because, you know, that's that's where you're going to see that magic. That's where you're going to see that mm-hmm. magic. So uh, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, because, I mean, I took him. He, I mean, I would carry the little carry thing. Yeah. I took him on listing appointments with me. I took him, but I didn't really just, like, hit it. Like before him, I would hit it. I didn't have any fear. I didn't have any. It was like, okay, I'm going to go out. I'm going to get it. Um, mm-hmm. But then when I had him, it was just like, okay, I don't know if I don't, you know, if I can't find anybody to watch him, I don't want to bring him on a listing appointment or I don't want to, you know, showings are okay, but listing appointment is a little bit different. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to make sure that he was taken care of before I put myself out there. Got it. Got it. Got you. Got you. So, so Jessica, so, so we've talked about how your business has come a long way. You've been in the business over two decades. Um, You've been through the ups, the downs, and you're soaring right now. So what do you see your business going in the next five to 10 years? In the next five to 10 years, I, 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 I just want consistency. Um, Mm. I think that, you know, I've been doing it for, um, now, what, seven years, um, mm-hmm. again, you're starting to see that repeat business, you know, people mm-hmm. stay in homes average five to seven years. So you're seeing a lot of those people sell their homes. Um, kids are moving out, they're downsizing. Um, so I, I just want to remain consistent. If it goes beyond that, mm-hmm. um, I'm not um, complaining. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I just wanted to stay consistent. Um, I, 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 I mean, I love what I do. I love helping people. So I don't gotcha. see myself, you know, saying, "Okay, I'm done with real estate" or anything like that. Um, I'm going to be in this business for a long time. I yeah. heard you say. I heard you say earlier about, you know, the investment properties real estate stuff that you have in different cities. Is that your exit strategy uh, in that five to 10 is to, to acquire more properties or what, what's your exit strategy? How is that going to happen for you? So, I mean, I wouldn't say that that's my main thing. Cause I mean, right now it's just so much going on in the market as mm-hmm. far as like, you know, um, we've got a lot of investors who have inundated our market. Sure. Um, but um I, I do plan on having a couple of investment properties, but I don't want anything that I can't control myself. I don't want to put myself gotcha. out of, you know, um, the what if scenario, you know, what if something should happen? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I want to have something available to control that's easy to control that I will be comfortable. Gotcha. So um, I don't really see that um, as my, you know, I'm going to get these properties and then I'm just going to retire. I don't foresee that. I always want to um, be relevant, I guess, in this business. And um, so I'll work. I'll I'll continuously work until they say, oh, she she got a bed rest or. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I, I plan on being on this business for a while. Good. I'm still we, can we can take Tara's question. question. She says, I'm really before we, getting to Tara's question, question, so do we see do you see yourself 60, 70 years old still selling real estate? Or I sure do. Okay. I used to work with a lady. There was a mm-hmm. lady in my office that was like 89 years old. Jesus. 89 years old. And she came in with her heels on, her dress to the nines. Mm. She so I plan on being her. Like, you're gonna be 89? 89? 
Amen. Okay. I don't know about the heels, though. Oh, listen. Listen. I don't know about the heels. I really have I'm going to be 89 heels. over there in Dominican Republic or something, trying to drink me a little cocktail. So that's what I'm trying to do. No, Miss Janice was in that office, baby. I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay. Let's go to Tara Cox's question. She says, do you set long-term and short-term goals? And if so, are you strategic with how you accomplish them? Hmm. Good question. Good question. Yes, I definitely set short term and long term goals. So um, short term is like three months. These are the certain things that I want to accomplish. And to me, long term is just for the year. Okay. And I re in December, um, I do my vision board. And I make sure that, you know, I set up everything that I want to accomplish for that year. So I put it out on the board. Hey, I want to lose weight. I want to do this. I want to, you know, whatever it is, you put it on that board. And then, you know, in the times where you're not feeling like, oh, my gosh, I'm not meeting this. Mm -hmm. Don't beat yourself up. It's human. Just get back on track again. Just like it. Yeah. So, get back. So, so we are. So we all know what's on your vision board. What are, what are a couple of things that are on your vision board for 2023, and have you accomplished those things? No. Uh. <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, hey, okay. Let's be honest. That's what I'm talking about. It's real talk. Yeah. No, I haven't. Um, mm-hmm. Again, it was some things that were on there <laughs> that um, I kind of let you know. Me, one thing was I wanted to um, lose a certain amount of weight, mm-hmm. and I didn't, but I'm not going to give up. So, like I actually said, starting today, 21 days, right? You do something for 21 days, it becomes a habit. That's what they mm-hmm. say, I think. So, um, starting today, I'm going to get back to doing my, you know, hit training and all that stuff and drinking my water and all that and eating right. Um, health is something that is very important to me. Um, okay. We read too often of, you know, it's unfortunate, like I, you know, on Facebook, you see people that you may know, people that other people know. I mean, people in their 30s and 40s dying of heart attack, stroke. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it, it's just, I think people don't really think about that. So if you don't have the right health and mental health, then how can you go on? So definitely you have to take time out and take those mental breaks um, and make sure that, you know, you're right. Don't, like I said, don't beat yourself up. If you say, oh yeah, by this time I thought I was going to have this amount in sales, or I thought I would have this many listings, or I thought, don't beat yourself up. Take the time, listen to your body, and then just when you're ready, go back at it. And readjust. Okay. That's good. Readjust. So so you we dropped Jessica off in the middle of the jungle, in the middle of the woods, some unknown place. What's the first thing that Jessica's gonna do? In the jungle? Or Why someplace, someplace that's, unknown. That's, that's, someplace that's, unknown. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Someplace unknown. Let's, let's really drop you know. off in a new, a new market. A new, let's, put a new market. In, let's put you in a new market. Let's put you in Maryland or, or somewhere up north. That oh, you're Maryland? Like, that's a good yeah. market. My Maryland. best friend lives in Maryland. Um, hey, maybe Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> yeah, Maryland. Yeah, so we're going to put you somewhere you don't know nobody. Somebody you don't know nobody. Yeah, you don't know nobody. Drop you off. What you do in that market as a real estate agent? Again, I would probably go to a builder. Or mm. go to um, a company, and I would go to a builder and just say, "Hey, you know, I'm new to the area. Are you hiring? Because um, I feel comfortable in new construction." Mm. Um, and go from there. So. Gotcha. So you would try to go get the job at the builder first, then. I would try to go at the job right. with the builder. I got you. Because okay. that way you're learning the city. Mm-hmm. 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 If you're working for that particular builder, you're kind of learning the city, and that gives you time to develop your knowledge of the area. I got you. So while I'm there, I am working for the builder, 
but I'm learning about other builders. I'm learning about the area. I'm learning about the different types of people that come in. Cause like when I moved to Atlanta, I didn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So let me ask you a question. So, so um, Jessica, so you, you've had a great career. Was there anything that you regret that happened or something that you could go back and change and say, man, I wish I could have did this differently. Was it, is there anything stuck out in your mind that you would go back and redo? No. No, I think That's everything happens for a reason. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. I did not have a, um, an easy road. Mm -hmm. think, you know, it was not an easy road. I've always had to um, figure it out and, mm -hmm. you know, find a way that works for me. Not everybody gotcha. is the same. So mm -hmm. you have to, you know, figure out, I think it, it, it develops character. It develops, mm -hmm. you know, who you are to go through those times and figure out, hey, what could I, what could I have done differently mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. to, you know, maybe not encounter those things. But I think regardless, things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Here's okay. a, here's a, I got, Go I know you got one too, Maurice, but yeah, I got one I, more you, you receive a lot of accolades from your, your, your peers. And I know that you, you're involved in different committees and there's different organizations that highlight the, the top agents. So you get a lot of accolades from your peers, but when was the moment that Jessica said, Oh snap, I'm doing this. Uh, <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't say that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, I love what I do. So right. I just want right. to go out and help people. I feel like I'm helping people. Um, you know, majority of my clients are military. Um, so I enjoy being, I mean, you know, you're helping families that are overseas that are, you know, being um, PCS. I, I don't know my race. I don't know. I think we all got that moment when you might have got that first little big old check and you was able to go over there and buy your son whatever he wanted. Uh, you might have dropped a you might have dropped a payment on your father's house or nothing. Just I'm just I just I just want to just love people and wow. just. I'm wow. pretty simple. That's what I was like. I, I was so humbled when you guys, you know, said, "Hey, do you want to be on my podcast?" I'm like, "Oh my gosh, that is so me!" Wow. I, I I I was amazed. So I again, I'm just loving what I do. I appreciate the opportunities. I I'm just that person. I'm very low key. Mm -hmm. You guys know that. I, right. I yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, we, we do know that, but we also know certain people have an alter ego that's yeah. totally opposite it's totally of what they what people see. What you see no. is what you get. I mean, gotcha. I'm pretty laid back. Um, I'm Jace's mom. So mm. like if I'm not doing the you know work thing, we're at the Jacksonville Sharks game <laughs> or okay. we're, you know, we're just relaxing, exploring Jacksonville. I mean, we're at the beach on the weekend sometimes. We're just okay. easy okay. going. It, 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 is there something in your mind that you would think, if I hit this, then I'm gonna think I'm a big deal? Is there something in your mind? No. no? Okay. Okay. Because no. I mean, I you know, I'm sure everybody looks at like million dollar listing and all of that. You mm -hmm. know, all of those shows. I mean, those people work hard. That you know that that's just our business. You work hard mm -hmm. to you know keep going to the next level, to the next level. I mean, they sell billions of dollars of real estate and they don't stop. Right. No. Like you, you, you keep going. Like if you enjoy what you're doing and you're helping people and you're having fun while doing it. I like it. I like it. So, so, that's so my good. last question. You gave a lot of nuggets about mindset and mm -hmm. leap of faith. Um, and just going full speed and, and making this thing happen. So how disheartened is it for you? Because you've been in the business a long time. How disheartened is it for you when you see new agents come into business and they really don't have that right mindset like you've shown and talked about in this that you've had for 20 plus years? Like you went through a whole lot. So how hard is it for, for you to see those agents that come one day, here today, and they're going tomorrow? Mm-hmm. 
I just say, you know, I, in, in, again, it kind of goes back to the social media. There's a lot of pressure um, sure. because you see all of these agents that are portraying, oh, yeah, I'm killing me. Right. You know, and it's like, <laughs> and it, and it's like you know, um, they all we all start from somewhere. Right. So, yeah, you know, again, you have to believe in yourself. You have to again, I watch motivational things. I read books um, to get me in the right mindset. So mm -hmm. I would just say if, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Again, I've you know I've been in the business on and off for 23 years. So it, it it doesn't happen overnight. Just stay educated, take the classes, get the designations, do do the work, do the work, mm -hmm. you know. Um join organizations, you know. Um, you have different organizations within um NEFAR, you have the National National Association of Realtors. Um, you've got different organizations out there that you can become a part of. Right. And I think being around other successful people kind of gives you that that jolt mm -hmm. that you may yeah. need to Absolutely. you know say, okay, well, I met her. She's, you know, she seems pretty cool. And she's yeah. able to I think when you start hanging around like-minded people, That's good. Mm -hmm. and you, you know, you say, okay, well, she can do it and she's this. I can do it too. It's good. Gotcha. I know we got to wrap it up. I, I, know, know, I, know, I, I got a question though. I still I got, got another I got, question. I got, one more, I got one more question. Well, again, you, you get let's get one fun. more question in. So you, you said you're old school. You, you do things old school ways. Do you feel that all this new technology, all this social media has made agents lazy and not want to put the work in to do the business? Now give, us, give us your take on that. Give, give us your, your idea, your opinion on that. I mean, again, it kind of depends on the agent. I, I've always been a forward thinker. Okay, so like mm -hmm. I'm old school, but like I think technology can take you in the right direction. So okay. if you use social media the right way, mm -hmm. then I think it can help you. Good. Don't forget about the like you know. I mean, I used to put all my contacts in Excel. <laughs> Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just think how long that would take now. You sit in there and, you know, then you got to transfer it because you can't take that file anymore. It has to be a CVS file. And it's just simple things like that. You know, right. you have to change your mindset. So, mm -hmm. I mean, again, take the technology and make it work for you. So if you're not a poster, you know, like I'm not an avid poster. I don't mind walking through a model and showing a model. I don't feel comfortable talking in front of the camera and, hey, it's me. You know, that's just not my personality. But I don't mind showing those models to people. And I mean, people have whole YouTube channels now. Mm hmm. And that that's that's our business, though. That that is the way of our world. If you want to find something out, you Google it, you YouTube it, you you know. Um, mm -hmm. Someone was telling me earlier, you can TikTok. Like more people are TikToking searches versus Googling. Yeah, cool. and I'm like, I don't even have TikTok. Mm -hmm. Someone said, Hey, I get my dinner ideas from TikTok. Mm. Okay. Um, all right, if I have to fix a car, I go on TikTok. I didn't know that because I don't have it. Yeah. So, I mean, again, if 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 it benefits you and you know how to utilize it to your best ability, you know, to where it works for you, I say go for it. Right. Why okay. why why do anything different? You have to do what works for you at the end of the day. Got you. I yeah, talk about, yep, my, last little, my last little question. Walk us through the day for Jessica Woods. <clears throat> we waking up at what time? And this time we're doing this and we're doing this. We eating. What are we doing? I wake up between 5 and 5.30 every morning. Okay. Then I wake my little one up. I drop him off to school like 7.30. Um, I get back eight o'clock from eight to nine o'clock. I'm usually 
checking my emails, responding to emails, following up that from nine to 11 is when I schedule like my morning Zoom calls for like um, potential um, buyer consultations. Yes, I still do buyer consultations. Um, and then also following up on maybe listing appointments just to make sure. Mm-hmm. Then um, from 12 to 2 is when I do those. I try to schedule those appointments from 12 to 2 or from 4 to 6 for showings and listings. Oh, of so from 2 to 3, I usually pick up my son and do whatever I have to do, drop him off and get him settled. So then I work from 4 to 6 and then from Six to seven is dinner time. Try to get back to have dinner with him. But apparently I'm not there tonight. So he's upset because no Taco Tuesday tonight. Then we'll make it up. Yeah, we'll we'll make it up to him. We'll make it up for him. And so from eight to nine, again, I'm following up emails, whatever, you know, just letting a client know if I didn't get back to him. Hey, I got your message. Unfortunately, I was doing X, Y, Z, but I'll make sure I get with you in the morning. Does this time or this time work? So 9 to 11 usually is that time that I um, either schedule my phone calls or um, I'll, sometimes I'll do showings. It just depends, again, on my client. And I kind of map that out. I try to get Mondays are like my day off. I don't really like to do a lot of stuff on Mondays. Tuesdays, I was on meetings all day today. (laughs) And so Mm -hmm. uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays um, are my days for the planning. And then I try not to do listing appointments on the weekends. Got it. I try to do them in the evening. Got it. Got you. Well, well, Jessica, this has been an amazing, amazing interview. Do you have any final thoughts? I know you said you're on social media. Can you tell the people where they can find you um, and some final thoughts for, for our audience? So I am on Facebook. Um, it is, uh, I think it's just uh, JW Sales Jax Homes, I think is my business page. Okay. And then um, my Instagram is JW Sales Jax RE on Instagram. Right. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you can just go to jessicadealsjacks.com. That is my um, page website. So um, our company has it set up to where if you want any information or anything, you just put your name in there and I'll get back to you. And I guess the only thing I would, I guess, tell people is just, be you. There's enough business out there. <laughs> There's, you know, um, people like to deal with people that they feel comfortable with. So um, again, be you. Enjoy what you do. Keep learning. Keep growing. Mm. Never get complacent. Um, and just strive to be the best. I love it. I love, I love it. it. Well, Jessica, we definitely appreciate you coming on the show. Um, Thank you guys for having me so much. I really Thank do you. appreciate yeah. it. We uh, yeah, give it up. We're gonna give you your, your we're giving your flowers today. Absolutely, great absolutely. Uh, great job. Uh, it's just amazing to see your growth, where you've been, where you've come from. I know that you have nothing but success in your future. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, and uh, we really, really appreciate you coming on our show just to kind of drop those gems and those jewels on our audience. So it's real good. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so much. Close to you. You guys are welcome, and I look forward to all the success you guys you you guys are getting out there um, and doing positive things for the community. So it'll definitely come back tenfold. So kudos to you guys. We receive. Thank it. you. We receive it. All right. So listen, um, if there's anything we can do for you from the show st- standpoint, don't hesitate. Absolutely. Reach out to us. Let us know what we can do to help you and any calls you got going on. We there. You can always count on us. Absolutely. Thanks, Definitely. guys. Sounds good. Thank well, you. Enjoy your night. Well, listen, that's another episode, y'all. Maurice, you want to take us out? Uh, we- take us out, man. Hey, okay, man. appreciate y'all sticking around. And um, check us out next Tuesday. We got Miss Felicia Mitchell. I think Felicia she's the best friend of yours, right? That's, that's, a, that's one of your yeah. good friends, right? 
That's your best yeah. friend, yeah. So yeah. together, they flock together. Together, exactly. <laughs> That's what's up. Absolutely. And uh, well, so listen, so listen, every Tuesday night, come check us out. Every Tuesday night, right back here uh, on Facebook. I think we on YouTube. We got YouTube. Uh, yeah. We, we go, I think yep. we're gonna go live next time on YouTube as well. I think we're trying to figure out something to go live on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, this is gonna be great for us. So come yep. check us out. Till next time. What? Don't thank talk you so about much, it. Jessica. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Bye.